Hello my dear friends, you're in the military summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. And first we're going to talk about a direction where the Russians continue their offensive operation. During the previous days of very heavy clashes, the Russians established complete control over Achiritsina, but uh, the thing is that there are still not so many geolocations that can confirm this, just the messages from different mappers. The Russians, according to information we have, managed to establish almost complete control over the villages by the name of Novokalinova and Keramik and according to information we have the Ukrainians start withdrawing process they have already abandoned their positions in the central and the western Novokalinova and most of Keramik were abandoned as well according to the understanding according to my understanding the Ukrainians are moving first to the stronghold and then the long road to the north in the direction of Hangliska so that's why the Ukrainians regarding the reports from the Russian sources that the Russians aren't at Arhangelska, the Ukrainians will try to hold this area as long as possible because Arhangelska, first of all, is the only key uh, that secures the, uh, let's say, successful evacuation of the armed forces of Ukraine from Keramik and Novokalinova itself. So the Ukrainians will try to hold the area as long as possible, but most likely after that they will be forced to fall back from this village or city as well. The Russian sources reported that in the town by the name of Keramik, the Russians managed to encircle the, let's say, the special forces, one of the most experienced and powerful special forces unit, white wolves of, uh, let's say, uh, the Ukrainian forces and to destroy it. So the clashes in the area continues. The most important thing is that the Western resources start confirming that the Russians have already concentrated up to 10,000 military personnel on the direction. This information was also confirmed by Forbes and now it's uh, time to understand and it's better to understand and think where exactly the Russians are planning to move further with these 10,000 units. Some sources are saying that the Russians might try to move to the west in direction of Pakrovsk. Some sources are saying that the Russians are going to use the 10,000 soldiers to establish control and to clear the territory between Solovyeva, Novopakrovska, Novoselovka, Pierva, Yasnobrodovka, Nitailova. But most likely the Russians using these 10,000 soldiers will continue offensive operation trying to break the additional Ukrainian defense belt and the Russians will try to move to the north from Acheretina in direction of the village by the name of Kalinova. So approximately most likely this is the next Russian target to move further to the north and to get as close as possible and to start moving like more precisely as close as possible in direction of Konstantinovka. So uh, according to geolocations, according to map, this from uh, let's say most likely Russian direction and if we uh, let's say continue further, I believe that the during the next uh, few weeks the Russians will try to get the village by the name of Yablunovka because from this perspective the Russians, uh, the opportunity, window of opportunity will be open for the Russians to encircle and to force the Ukrainians to fall back from New York Taretsk uh, and this, uh, let's say, agglomeration and to attack the Konstantinovka from the south. So once again, most likely 10,000 Russian soldiers will start moving further to the north. Uh, when talking about the fields, the artillery pocket, we continue receiving updates. We have the video of significant number of losses among the Ukrainians, so more precisely of the 47th, Mecha 47th Mechanized Brigade. Uh, after the Russians captured the fields, after the Russians established control over the most of the tree lines and the fortifications between Solovyevo, Novobakhmutovka and Berdychi, the Ukrainians start running away from their positions and significant number of Ukrainian soldiers were destroyed as a result of Russia. Russian artillery fire and Tosling Thrower strikes fire. On this video we can see another Max Pro of armed forces of Ukraine that was destroyed by the Russians during the, uh, let's say, withdrawing process. Now let's move to Krasnogorovka. The Russians continue their offensive operation. The last updates we receive is that the Russians established complete control over the gas station Grand Alliance, Alliance and after that the Russians continue moving further to the north with the purpose to establish control over the first high-rise building that located along Central Street. And according to different mappers, the Russians have already established complete control over the first buildings and they continue developing their foothold in many directions.
This is very important, let's say, achievement, because using high-rise building, let's say, along the street, they can control the residential area further to the north, and they can block the Ukrainian fortifications in the eastern part. Furthermore, I'll remind you that during the previous days, we got one update that the Russians completely established control over the territory, but yet we haven't received even a single ge geolocation confirming this. Anyway, despite of the absence, complete absence of any geolocations, we see that the Ukrainians are in a very desperate situation, and most likely the Russians will be able to establish control over uh, this stronghold also during the next few weeks. Very interesting details are coming from Novomikhailovka, Konstantinovka, Uglidar area. The Ukrainians, after they lost Novomikhailovka, were forced to redeploy additional reinforcements in the area. According to information we have, the Ukrainians redeployed 116th mechanized brigade from Zaporozhye direction, and also the Ukrainians have redeployed 33rd mechanized brigade from Bakhmut Artemis directions, which confirms that uh, now Zaporozhye is less reinforced by the Ukrainians as well as Bakhmut, which will also give the Russians additional, let's say, possibilities, additional opportunities to develop their offensives on those directions as well. Just of Yar, we haven't received anything during the previous night, just the regular things and the important update about the redeployment of the 33rd Brigade. Severs direction, nothing special, but we have lots of very interesting details from the South and Kupin's direction. And according to information we have, the Russian armed forces managed to broke through the defenses of the 3rd Azov Brigade and entered the village Makiev. Recently, the Ukrainians have redeployed the 3rd Azov Brigade and if you remember, a few weeks ago, during the April, we got lots of updates from the town by the name of Barova. And according to information we have, if you remember, in the village of Barova, on the 21st of April, we got this report. On the 12th, 16th and 18th of April, there were effective flights of FAPs to the locations of the 3rd Azov Brigade. To make up uh, for losses over the last two days, more than 100 mobilized people were taken away from the training grounds in Chiguev. Among those who were taken, not all completed the initial training course. So once again, during the uh, after the battle for uh, uh, Avdiivka, the when the Third uh, Azov Brigade was redeployed from that area, the Ukrainians redeployed the Third Azov Brigade in direction of Barova, this area, and the Russians during the April bombed this area heavily, and the Ukrainians had significant losses, uh, m m mostly m more precisely of the Third Azov Brigade. But uh, as we discussed, according to the post, the Ukrainians were forced to let's say mobilize and to send and to fulfill the loss of third of brigade by an experience and some of them haven't um, let's say passed the basic trainings uh, soldiers and after that those soldiers and those units of third of brigade were redeployed in direction of makievka and now today on the 28th of april we got report that the russians decided to attack an experienced ukrainian forces and basically the defense of third of brigade will collapse and they were forced to fall back so that was a very as you can see long-term tactics of the russians they knew for sure where exactly Third Azov Brigade would be redeployed, and they did everything according to the plan. And now they answered, let's say, the bank of Zhiribets River. And if this information conf is confirmed, probably this information might be confirmed during the next, uh, let's say, 24 hours. And after that, the Russians will be able to start moving further to the south in direction of Tirni, let's say, at, by attacking the Ukrainian forces from the north, because during the previous days, the Russians made lots of attempts to attack Esnabrodovka in Tirni from the east, but most of them were repelled by the Ukrainians. Now the Russians, if the information confirmed, will be able to move further to the south, let's say, along the Zhiribets River. We continue receiving updates from Kislovka Katlarovka, according to pro-Ukrainian mappers deep state, the Russians managed to improve their positions further and basically according to the mappers the Russians established complete control over the part of Kislovka that lays along the railways. So this is obviously significant progress. We know that the Russians also have their positions in the vicinity of Tabayevka so most likely during the next few days we're gonna see more attempts to attack along the N26 road and from the Russian new gains in Kislovka let's say also towards the N26 roads. With the purpose to encircle the Ukrainians in Katlarovka and in the rest of uh, Kislovka. So the situation, as you can see, in this direction is also getting worse and worse. Uh, furthermore, during the previous 24 hours, during the previous night, we got additional updates and satellite pictures of the Russian strikes, of the results of Russian strikes in the western part of Ukraine. As you can see, the Russians, if you remember, the Russians were targeting and bombing the Ukraine power plants and three or two power plants or energy facilities constructions were damaged and destroyed. 
on this for example satellite videos photos we can see the casualties and the, and the, the let's say the results of Russian strikes on the Bratvarovska power plant and further to the south we got some first pictures from Burstinska power plant also as a result of Russian missile strikes so we see that uh, for now the Ukrainians uh, of course have some problems with electricity but not like a full collapse but most likely during the next months we're gonna see a total blackout of Ukraine and that's it for the short video military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye